as women wear many, 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 many labels, right? Sometimes I define myself. I'm a single mother to a 24-year-old. Um, I'm also a Malay, I'm a Muslim, I'm CEO of Astro, I'm a mother, I'm a daughter, uh, I'm, and I'm also auntie to my nieces, or oh, I've also got eight cats, for instance. And so if you look at all of it, it's always about trying to get that perfect balance, but forgiving ourselves for being imperfect in a way. Astro Malaysia is today in about 75% of total Malaysian households. I, I think you know Malaysia has got about 7.7 .7 million households and 30 million people. So in a way we are in the lives of everybody because not only are we just a TV company, we're a media company. So we have TV, we have radio, we have um, digital, we have publications and print. And the most amazing part is we do our own content. So every year we do 12,000 hours of content across all genres. How did a woman in a very traditional culture, frankly, rise to become CEO of a company that is a behemoth in the lives, as you say, of all of these people in Malaysia? I don't have the answer to that. I do remember doing quite well. Somebody asked me, when do you want to grow up? What do you want to be? So I did say I wanted to be a doctor, I wanted to go to Harvard University, I wanted to own a Mercedes Benz. <laughs> and I think yeah, from the age of 11. So I think ultimately it is about having those big dreams and believing in yourself. I grew up with two brothers, a family, uh, two brothers and me, and my parents were fairly traditional. So. I think um, throughout that, it has been about wanting to be as good as my brothers um, and not to be seen any different. Currently, I think if you look at Astro as an example, 52% of our workforce are women. And, and how about, many of those are in the higher echelons? Yeah, on senior management, about 40%. And in the board, uh, we're about 30%. So we're actually quite a good sort of baseline benchmark for all the companies, I believe, um, to follow. Um, when you walk into big business <laughs> gatherings, are yeah. you one of many CEOs who are women? Well, no, because if I were to walk into a room today, that'd be at, at best two lady CEOs. So it is a big stretch. You actually have to build a whole pipeline of the right talent, because ultimately, I mean, it has to be the best person for the job. And if you look at the pipeline coming into um, the C-suite level, um, there's not many women to choose from. So I used to believe that it's meritocracy. Uh, it is the best person for the job. But when the numbers are five to 95, um, I think something else has to happen. I didn't used to believe in role models and having visible uh, women leadership make a difference, that much of a difference. But I think in a way, in Astro, it does. Once people are used to seeing contributing women in every room they walk into, it becomes the new normal. And I think girls and graduates actually need to see that it is something, it is not a stretch to get that. It is way, way possible. If there's one thing I've learned over the years is the fact that it's more about me knowing who I am and getting comfortable to be who I am and accepting myself and to be comfortable in my own skin. So I think first and foremost, we all have to ask ourselves what makes us happy um, and make those choices um, along the way. Um, I think that's quite important. You're a single mother, right, with a son in college. Um, and you've said that you told your employees that, you know, family would always come first. And yet, you know, you're a really high flying uh, executive. How did you manage to make that true? <laughs> Or did you not? <laughs> I think that that's the thing. It is a lot of compromises. I sent him to boarding school, for instance, um, when he was 11, primarily because 
you know, it, it's very important for a young boy to have a consistent set of rules, but also commit that if he, it's not for him, if he doesn't like it, then I'll take him out unconditionally. And every every exit, every breaks, you know, I will be there even though it's a weekend. So you've got to make it work. And that was the negotiation I had with my bosses at that time. I said, you know, I'll give you my all, but one thing, every single exit and all that, I will be in Melbourne where Rizal is. And that's non-negotiable. What are your words of wisdom for millennial women out there who really want to be you, have a career like yours? I think they just have to find something they really want to do, they can commit to, um, that's bigger than them, that they're passionate about, that they will turn up every day and create value. Um, and I think they need to be extremely honest, more about themselves than about others in a way, because I think we have to take responsibility for reinventing ourselves and to ask ourselves constantly whether we're still the best person for the job and what it takes. Um, I think girls shouldn't shy away from science and technology. My worry there is that in the pipeline and coming through, in my company, 25% of uh, the workforce of about 6,000 are engineers, and I think hardly one or two of them are women. If girls do not embrace science and technology, it will hurt the pipeline even more and, and the ability for them to become leaders. So those are the little things I think that girls can take on. All right, Rana Razan, thank you so much thank for you. sharing your wisdom with us today. Thank you.